Back in January of this year, back before Borderlands 3 was announced, I had an article on The Escapist listing five reasons why I was worried about the game. Now the game is released and we've all had a chance to play it, so I thought it would be good to look at how it turned out in light of all those concerns. The first concern, the plan was to make Borderlands 3 really big. I really thought the long development cycle of Borderlands 3 meant that the project had runaway feature creep and we were going to get something like Mass Effect Andromeda, where the game was a hodgepodge of different conflicting designs, which is common with games that get caught in development hell. Or maybe we'd get something bloated like Batman Arkham Knight, where new gameplay modes eclipse the core mechanics. But that didn't happen. The game isn't an over-designed mess. Don't get me wrong, this game is huge. There are a lot of zones, a lot of foes, and a lot of story. Eventually it felt like the Lord of the Rings movies where you think, okay, that was a good ending, and then it drags on for two more hours and ends four more times. But that's fine. The important thing is that the game wasn't bloated and unfocused like I feared. Second concern, it had been a long time since the last game. I was really worried that the team might lose their way. The pre-sequel was outsourced to another studio, which means it's been seven years since the last Borderlands game from Gearbox. Seven years is a really long time in this industry. People come and go, and it was totally possible that the changes in staff and company priorities would mean that they wouldn't be able to recreate the magic of Borderlands 2. As an example of this sort of creative shift would be the evolution of id Software. In the 90s, they made energetic, fast-paced gonzo shooters. And then as the company grew, they shifted to slower, browner, more serious games like Doom 3, Quake 4, and the original Rage. But this sort of creative erosion hasn't happened to Gearbox. Borderlands 3 reached the market with its gameplay, art style, and oddball personality intact. Concern number three, Anthony Birch is gone. Anthony Birch was the lead writer on Borderlands 2, and most of the charming moments in the game were because of him and his creative sensibilities. He consulted on pre-sequel without being the main writer, and you could really tell. Pre-sequel tried to imitate the previous game, but it didn't have that same playful energy. The story wasn't as interesting, the villain wasn't as fun, and the characters weren't as vibrant. I expected the same thing would happen in Borderlands 3. I guess I was a little bit right about this one. The jokes in Borderlands 3 aren't quite as dense or as strong, but the game has gotten a few laughs out of me. It's, it's fine. Maybe it wasn't everything I hoped for, but it's fine. Concern number four. The publisher has microtransaction fever. Even nine months later, publisher 2K Games still has microtransaction fever. If anything, it's gone worse since I wrote the original article. And since then, they've done a bunch of other really shady stuff that I don't have time to get into. Publisher 2K Games are loathsome, predatory creeps. The exact sort of cruel douchebags that Handsome Jack was designed to satirize. But for whatever reason, the creeps kept their hands off of Borderlands 3. The game doesn't have any loot boxes or pay-to-win microtransaction nonsense. It doesn't have a hint of that stuff. It's clear that loot boxes and pay-to-win microtransactions were never part of the design. Okay, there was some strange sketchy stuff going on with review copies and that was bad, but whatever the faults of Publisher 2K games, they at least had the brains to leave the core mechanics alone. And my final concern was that Gearbox has a sketchy track record. I guess I was still a little bit right about this one. The game is a little wobbly at launch and it feels like it's one or two patches from being finished. But it's not like a disaster on the level of Aliens Colonial Marines. The game doesn't feel like a mess of cut corners. It doesn't look like the developer is mindlessly chasing industry fads. They didn't turn this into an Ubisoft style open world collect-a-thon or add a battle royale mode. The game looks and feels like the thing fans have been asking for and what we were promised in the trailers. So yeah, I was mostly wrong on all five of those concerns. Borderlands 3 didn't make any of the mistakes I expected. On the other hand, there is just one little problem with the game, which is that the designers managed to muck things up in a way I never would have predicted. They messed up the loot system. Actually, maybe it's unfair to say they messed up the loot system. I can't tell what they were trying to do or even if this change was deliberate or not. So instead of saying the loot is broken, I'll say it's weird. I don't like it. Here's a loot grind primer if you're not into games like Borderlands or Diablo. In these kinds of games, there are usually several tiers of loot. White items are trash. Green items are barely usable. Blue items are okay. 
Purple items are really good. Orange items are incredible. Some white items are better than others, but you're not going to find a white item that beats an orange. Different games have slightly different scales. They have different names for all the colored tiers, and often they'll have more tiers above orange. And sometimes they switch the colors around, but this gives you the basic idea. Better weapons are more powerful, but much harder to find. The player will naturally want as much of their arsenal to be purple and orange as possible. Maybe they have an orange sword, but their helmet is only blue. So they fight a lot of monsters or psychos or whatever the game has. Sooner or later, they get the item drop they're looking for, but by the time they find that orange helmet, they've probably gained a few levels. Now that orange sword is a couple levels below them, and it doesn't have the same punch it used to. And by the time they find a better sword, something else in their collection will be going obsolete. This is what makes these kinds of games so addictive. You're always enjoying your latest reward while also looking forward to the next. The player can keep gaining power, keep getting rewarded, and there's always something left to search for. Borderlands 3 doesn't feel like the games that came before. I don't want to say the game is broken or anything, but it doesn't have the allure that the previous game did. The first problem is that orange items are way more common. On my first trip through Borderlands 2, I found just two legendary weapons. I leveled up 35 times over the course of 40 hours or so and got just two legendaries. They were rare and special. But here in Borderlands 3, they've gone completely crazy with the so-called rare drops to the point where they're not actually rare anymore. Like, orange items are really common. I mean, really common. Like, so common that there's nothing special about finding them anymore. Finding orange items is just part of the routine. The second problem is that the power of the various item tiers has been leveled out. Like, instead of this, it feels more like this. I want to stress that this chart isn't based on any hard numbers. I don't have the source code for the game, and I don't know what's going on under the hood. This chart is just to illustrate how the game feels to me, and it's based on taking one character all the way to the level cap and leveling the other three into their teens and twenties. I've put some time into this game, and this is what I've observed. There's more overlap between the tiers, and there's a ton of noise in the system. Good weapons are just as rare as before, but now you can't tell if a weapon is good or not by looking at the color. They even added a score to weapons to rate their overall power, similar to how the Destiny games do it. Except, this number is a lie. I foolishly trusted it on my first character by equipping whatever guns the game promised were the most powerful. I had a collection of purples and oranges that were completely weak. It took so long to kill bad guys it felt like I was playing The Division. Then I wised up and started ignoring the power scores and looked at the stats to realize that the system had been lying to me. Now it's really common for me to find an orange item at my level, try it out, and then go back to using a blue item that's two levels below me. That shouldn't happen. Or at least, it wouldn't happen in the old games. With the new system, it's very hard to tell if any particular weapon is useful. The power score isn't reliable. Item rarity is too noisy to be a useful filter. You can't just look at the numbers because there are a bunch of attributes like projectile speed, weapon warm-up, and projectile size that aren't shown but have a massive impact on performance. If you really want to sort the good from the bad, then the most reliable way of doing that is to try them out one at a time. Maybe that sounds fun, but if everything from green to orange is viable, then that means you're going to need to experiment with a lot of weapons. In the old days, once you had purple gear, you could sell everything below that to a vendor and get back to playing. Now you've got to consider it all. The problem is that this breaks the psychological loot cycle I talked about earlier. In the previous games, you were forever chasing the dream of being decked out in legendary orange gear. Now color doesn't seem to matter that much, and I'm not excited to see oranges. Borderlands 3 is like a slot machine that constantly rings the winner bell even when it doesn't give you anything. Legendaries are really common and rarely impressive, which makes farming them a lot less interesting. I don't know why the team made this change, and yes, I'm aware of anointed items. That stuff makes the end game grind a little more interesting, but it doesn't help the problems I discussed above. You spend more time sorting through less exciting loot, and you have less information helping you tell the good from the bad. I'm glad the team avoided all those things I was worried about, but I really wish the loot system made finding loot a little more exciting. In particular, I wish that first playthrough with a character was more interesting than searching for the next Jacob's Revolver. The way it is now, Borderlands 3 just made me hungry for more Borderlands 2.